The show Flip or Flop has been on HGTV for the last eight seasons. The host, Tarek El Moussa, and his wife, and, no, ex-wife, sorry, Christina, and said, we weren't going to talk about their gossip. They're no longer married, but they still host the show and they get along perfectly. The show that we're going to be watching today is when they were still in marital bliss, so you don't even have to look for that. <laughs> I don't even want to get into that. If you want to know their gossip, Google it. But this particular show I wanted to pick because of the fact that everybody keeps telling me in the comment section that they have some really fuzzy math, meaning that the estimates that they're giving for these costs don't really add up to what they say they either made at the end or the repairs are not what they say they're going to be because obviously they're going to cost a lot more than they claim they're going to cost. So we'll just go ahead and watch the show together. You let me know as each of the repairs come about if you feel like that they gave a good fair estimate or you do you think the math is like way fuzzy <laughs> check out that back structure oh wow yeah it looks like a house weird right i mean that's that could be a huge selling point if we're able to convert it into a multi-family property that's at least a hundred thousand dollars in value wow we can't okay first things first if you find an extra property on a property that you're fixing to flip that is a major bonus i mean without even seeing the property if you see a building that could possibly be it is an additional rental unit that can always add extra value when you're going to resale because people love income properties if it turns out that it isn't an income property and it's just a horrible shed that can be terrible or if it takes up the whole backyard that could be an eyesore but we'll find out more about this but just know if you're looking for flip properties and you see something like that in the back bonus i did that before it works out fantastic look at this house because the current tenants are still living in it so the best we can do is check out comps in the area Here's the first Smart. one. It's a two bedroom, one bath, 861 square feet, sold for 367,000. Dang, that's a lot for less than 900 square feet. All right, and there's another comp. Two bedroom, one bath, also 861 square feet, sold for 373,000. So, so the comps are looking pretty solid based on their list price. Right, and it's a small house, so three have can't be that much. All right, let's go. I just love California prices. 900 square feet, less than 900 square feet, and it's 373,000. You can get like, get a humongous house here in Louisiana for $379,000. I mean, <laughs> it's unbelievable, California prices. This is Tarek El Moose. I was calling about your property in Long Beach. Oh, okay. We just drove the, the neighborhood, ran some comps, and uh, we were ready to place an offer, 295,000, all cash. I totally understand it's occupied and we're uh, we're buying it as is side and seat. As crazy as this might sound that he would buy a house sight unseen it's not unheard of many investors even investors i've worked with in the past will buy a house sight unseen because the comps support it so they've already ran those comps and they know that they're going to be getting a bargain i don't know how much they're going to get a bargain for but it depends on what they deal with in the end when they go in it but they're willing to take that risk because the comps are so high so let's see how much they get it for our contractor is meeting us at the house today and we're finally getting our first look inside. Huh. All right, she's open. Woo! What is tiny? Wow. Just looking in this room, I see that we might have uh, some issues with some plugs that may not be grounded. Yeah, oh jeez! look at the out. kitchen. It's Ooh. not that bad. I thought it was going to be a hoarder's house. Okay, well, the good news bad. is it's a small kitchen, which means it's not going to be expensive. Not it's many cabinets. It's a very small kitchen. The bad news is it's a small kitchen. What we can do to improve the value would be to open up the kitchen. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. What if we remove this entire wall, opening up the kitchen? Close this door off and run uppers and lowers. What are we looking at? Best case scenario, we're looking right around 5,500. Wow. Really, this house just has to have a nice kitchen, has to have a nice bath. To me, that's still very inexpensive. So they want to knock out a wall. They want to put a, like, open it all up. And then they want to put kitchens, uppers and lowers. Granted, the kitchen is small, but $5,500? Does that seem a little less expensive? Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. You let me know what you think. I still think it's cheap. All right, so this is the only bathroom in the house. 
Yuck. Oh, gosh. Ugh. It's not clean. All right, so full gun here. Just give me a ballpark. Um, yeah, maybe 3,800. Oh, come on. Now that is crazy. 3,800 for a full gut of a bathroom. That's not even counting on the fact that, first of all, this house is really old. Who knows what kind of plumbing is behind those walls? That is a very low ball offer. Unless they have like this contractor on retainer and there he's getting like a flat fee on top of it all. And we're talking about California where the prices are really high. Now I know why people wanted me to review this on the show. <laughs> now here's where I see an electrical issue. If you look down at the ground, you have outlets that are literally at the ground. Right, and that can be a fire hazard. No kidding. Based on what we're walking, I mean, what would you say, worst case, if we needed to rewire the whole house? Right around 4,000. Okay, so electric's gonna be an issue. 4,000 to rewire the whole entire house. Okay, granted, it's only 900 square feet. Doesn't seem that unreasonable. That's probably right around where you would do that, except for one thing. They didn't talk about the panel, and the panel is gonna cost you around that much too. A panel can run you as little as uh, $1,500, but up to $4,000. So they left that little part out. The wires may only cost $4,000, but the panel's gonna cost you more. Oh. <laughs> what, what is this? Is this? How creepy and strange. Looks like a hoarder's house. What in the world is all this stuff back here? It's like an old junkyard. Oh, creepy, there's another door right here. And there's a note on it that says, leave this room alone, I'll be back tonight. <laughs> Who wants to go first? I'm not. Wait, what? Just go in. Oh my God, we're so scared. <laughs> it's really scary. This is oh, a bedroom. Geez. Ew! Oh, come on. This is somebody's bedroom. Oh my God, they had, they had like multiple shoes. people living in here. Insane. I'm thinking we leave this room alone. No, yeah, you can never turn this into like a house. How much is it gonna cost to clear all this out? If you're looking several thousand, dump piece alone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bid for the renovation is $25,000, but that does not include doing anything for the back space. So while we wait to find out what the city says we can do with that back shed, we're gonna start cleaning it out. So let's just talk about this real quick. They're just saying an estimated cost just for the house is $25,000. If you add up the kitchen and the bathroom, I still say they're guessing low. If you're planning on flipping a property, first of all, make sure you have a licensed contractor. Secondly of all, make sure you get a bunch of bids. And thirdly, you're gonna have an extra reserve. Always have at least an additional 25% of your budget saved for just in case emergencies because you never know what happens when you start opening up walls. The dump fees alone were $5,000. Hi. Liking the place? No. Oh man. Did you go to the city and can we convert this to living space? Unfortunately, we cannot. Oh, uh, uh, poop. Really? No. This one's zoned R1. Now, it is permitted to have a home office or a home business, so somebody could work out of here. And get this, the bathroom is permitted. No, it's not. What? That, that thing is not permitted. Are you serious? It's the only other thing that's on the permit. <laughs> wow. This still, I know that she doesn't think it adds value, but I think it definitely adds some value to have a shop, first of all, that has a bathroom in it. And if someone decides that they're tired after working in their shop, they can actually take a nap there because it's absolutely humongous. So I think their best bet is probably just to leave this as a blank slate, clean it up, maybe put some drywall up, clean out the garage, paint the floor, call it a day. Well, let's just find out what they do, but I'm sure that's probably where they're gonna head off to because they can't make it into living space. The city won't allow it. Black space can't be permitted. Our best bet is to leave it as a blank canvas and let the buyer decide what it should be. Our only hope now is to make the front house as nice as we can. All right, let's talk design. So since we can't- So the best part of the show is that she turns these into masterpieces. She takes these houses that you would think, oh my gosh, how can you actually make this beautiful again? And she has an incredible design taste. And I'm interested to see what she picks as far as finishes because she always does a really good job. The great part about this particular flip is the fact that it is only like a 900 square foot house. So you can actually put in some pretty higher end stuff because you don't need as much stuff, but I wouldn't go crazy. I never recommend you 
over update for the area. White shaker cabinets in the kitchen and the bathroom and then give it a contrast. So countertops, maybe like a gray quartz. This house will stand out and hopefully, you know, it'll distract people from the fact that there's no yard. This kitchen may look bigger with the wall gone, but it's still small. So closing off this door will give us much needed cabinet and counter space. Closing off a door only costs $1,200. That means that they have to take out the door, they have to replace the drywall on the front, there's framing that goes around there, they have to remove all that, they have to fill in that space. I'm not a contractor. If you are a contractor, does $1,200 to remove a door and then put the wall on the outside and the inside of the house, does that seem right? I have no idea, but that seems low to me. If you are a contractor, let me know if that is an accurate bid. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't add up to me. We're flipping a two bedroom, one bath home in Long Beach, California that we bought for $307,000. And we've already put over $31,000 into it. Oh, so their $25,000 uh, estimate has already gone up to 31 too. So I'm sure it's gonna even go up more than that. Told you, that's why you have to go ahead and have that extra stockpile of money for whenever you do a flip, because things always happen, always. Well, let's, let's talk about the bathroom design. In the bathroom, we cannot mess up like we did on the kitchen. It needs to be perfect, appear as luxurious as possible so buyers fall in love with it. If you've learned one thing about watching any of my reacts, what is the one thing I always tell everybody? That what sells a house? Kitchens and bathrooms. So of course the space is really small. So in order for it to get as much buyers and more interest as possible, they're investing most of their money in the kitchen and the bathroom. Like something like this. No, I definitely like, for example, this, but I feel like we need to stick with white. This one has the bigger ones. For this bathroom, honestly, stick with the normal three by sixes. Or just the normal, simple subway tiles. That'd be right here. Right here. I think this is the best bet. But what do you want to do for a soapbox? What do you want to do for a mosaic bed? You know, I think just subway tile, floor to ceiling, and we'll choose a flooring that looks nice with this and the quartz countertop. People love subway tile. It's classic, it always works, even in the smallest of spaces. So if you have a really tiny bathroom and you're thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't do subway tile, it works, it's classic, do it. I'm gonna be honest here. This is purple. I, I like purple. lavender, so that's probably why I like it. <laughs> that's not purple. So we have a lime green and lavender house. Is it gate pink too? Got a pink uh -huh. gate and a pink gate. purple garage. Purple trim, purple like garage. It. it sounds like my car just started. There's your is there car. someone in my car? <gasps> oh my God, what the hell? <laughs> what? <gasps> How'd they get my keys? Hey. If they did that for the benefit of the show, that was really well acted because <laughs> that would have freaked me out. <laughs> totally freaked me out. <laughs> I've never had anything stolen like my car, so I would have been crying at that point. <laughs> All right, it's the big reveal time. We're gonna find out how much they actually spent on the house and if the money actually adds up. And I will give you my personal opinion because <laughs> I've done enough flips in my life that I know if the math does not add up. And I know what real estate fees are, even though they're slightly different in each state. So let's take a look. I brought the comps. We paid $307,000 for the house. $307,000. Put over $30,000 into it. So that puts us about 340,000. Right. Our closing costs to sell are gonna be about 15,000. So we have a break even at $355,000. Okay. This one's pretty equal to ours at 405,000. It's also fixed up. It's very nice. It has indoor washer dryer. It has a nice grass area. What do you want to list for? I think we're coming at 4099. I'm good with that. When you get this house staged, come in looking perfect. Yeah. So at the beginning, if you remember, the comps came in at like 360, 379. So the area has actually increased in value over that short period of time. They took them two months to purchase the house. And then so then they had to fix up the house. That took about 31 days. So that's three months since they originally purchased the house. And it's gone up about twenty to $30,000 since the day they purchased. That is one hot market. If I would be flipping every week. No wonder why they made a mint on this show. <laughs> It looks nice. Nice garden. Yeah. I like the color. It's good. Good landscaping in the front yeah, too. Yeah, the landscaping's cute. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Hi. How I'm are Christina. You? Nice to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Nikki. I'm Nick. 
So uh, this house is a two bedroom, one bath. It's almost 900 square feet. Uh, it's listed at $409,000. We're realtors in the area. We work this area a lot. So we're just, you know, checking things out. I like how the... I have to tell you what always cracks me up is that no matter when they have an open house, they always have a flood of buyers coming in through their house. So if you are about to sell your home and your real estate agent has an open house and she says, well, we didn't have a lot of buyers come through. Don't panic because this is created for television. They have a flood of people coming in to look at this house because it's on television. And some of them might even be friends. And you saw right there that a few of them are real estate agents. The typical open house in our area does not have a flood of home buyers coming through. You may get one or two clients and most likely nine times out of 10, they're not going to purchase that house. They're going to purchase another house. They just happen to be house shopping. So don't panic. If your house is up for sale and you have an open house and you only have a couple people come through, it doesn't mean they don't like your house. It's just one of those things. Open house doesn't look like it does on television. Just FYI. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming thank by. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Can you believe it? We actually found a buyer that likes that thing. Well, it only takes one buyer, honey. Hopefully that one buyer will write an offer soon. And we can get our car back. The one thing I am really happy about with this show is that they had their open house. The people came through and they didn't immediately get an offer. It never happens that way. It only happens that way on TV, but they didn't do it on this show. <laughs> After a week on the market, we received a full price offer for $409,900. If this deal goes through, we'll make a profit of over $49,000. And we got more good news from the police who recovered our stolen car. Time to find another house to flip. Hold up a minute. But what about the cost of the utilities to turn on the house? Like, every time you purchase a house, you have to have the utilities turned on. You have to have, you have to pay a mortgage during that time. You have to have uh, all sorts of inspections done. I don't believe that the only cost them 31,000. I think the renovation might have cost them 31,000 because they have a, a contractor they've been working with and have a relationship with. But they didn't put in all the other factors like they had 31 days, actually 39 days of a mortgage. They had 39 days of electricity that needed to go to the house. They had 39 days of utilities that needed to be charged. That doesn't really add up. Anybody that's ever flipped a house knows that yeah, the repairs of the house and to remodel the house might have cost $39,000. There's a whole other slew of other expenses that need to go with that. It still does seem like some fuzzy math to me. If you like these kind of React videos and would like me to do some more, let me know in the comment section and I will pick your show. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because you matter.